Hello, we are live right now. So let me invite uh, my speakers today to on their video. Thank you for those who are joining us. If you have just joined us tonight is our pillow talk episode two. Okay, so tonight our topic is, is following your dream a myth? Okay, now before that, let me introduce to you who are our speakers tonight. Okay, right. So we have, uh, let's start with our most handsome first lap. Uh, Suhu, sorry, we're not saying that you're not handsome. You are, you know, we love you. Okay, but tonight you just second place, lah. Okay, yeah. So Johnny, Johnny, Johnny Liu uh, has 25 years of experience in the field of human resources, resource, and uh, he graduated with a degree in economics from London U. Johnny has worked in diverse industries within the manufacturing. Uh, and R&D sectors, currently he's holding dual roles as the HR director and appointed company director in Intech Electronics. Being a HR leader, he's passionate about developing and helping people realize their potential at work. And off work, we know him as a very loving husband, uh, very good photographer, okay, uh, and uh, a very sporting friend, all right. He also served actively in, in the leadership council and as a music director in his home church in GBC, uh, Georgetown Baptist. Thank you for joining us, Johnny. You can unmute. Okay. Thank you, Liz. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. We are so excited that you are here with us. And our second... Uh, speaker, yes, Suhu, my Sifu, all right. Uh, he is an international licensed master trainer in NLP. Uh, that's why I learned my NLP as well. Um, a certified hypnotherapist, many, many times, numerous times without even realizing during the training, during NLP, he hypnotized us. And then we are like, really, we don't even realize it, okay? So if you want to try him, you should attend his uh, NLP courses, okay, and see how effective it is. And he's also a John C. Maxwell trainer uh, and coach, and he was the founding president of the Malaysian Association of Professional Trainers and Coaches, MapTech. Suhu has been in the area of training since 2007. His forte is being in the sales training, entrepreneurship, and mindset breakthrough. Now, he is the recipient of the prestigious Global Training and Development Leadership Award uh, by the World HRD Congress in their Silver Jubilee Celebration in year 2017, a uh, Hall of Fame in Asia's Training and Development Excellence Award in year 2018, SME Icon by Malaysian Service Provider Confederation in year 2018, and Best Sales Trainer in Malaysia Golden Globe Tigers Award in year 2019. On a personal level, I know Suhu as a great and inspiring mentor. Really. Thank you for joining us. Pillow, Pilo, yes. Also. Yeah, tonight I forgot to show Pillow, all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pillow <And>, pajama. <laughs> you know, guys. I was just joking, okay? I was just saying, you know, when I was uh, 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 chatting with uh, um, uh, the speakers, I say, you know, let's, let's wear our pyjamas and our lingeries and our uncle for the guys wear, wearing uncle uh, singlet. And here he, he is wearing, really wearing his singlet, okay? So Johnny, chicken out. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny and Sharon and myself chicken out, okay? So really hats off to you, Suhu. And uh, our last, uh, but not least, the gorgeous, ever gorgeous Sharon Tan. She's a sales manager in the Northern Region by, by Tronic Medical uh, Devices Malaysia. And uh, she is tasked to lead a high performance sales team in Penang. Currently pursuing her doctorate in business admin, Sharon is one of the most disciplined, really. I've never met anyone as disciplined as her. And she's, you know, while juggling her full-time job, she's also a Con Marie uh, practitioner, sparking joy in everyone that she meets. Sharon has one motto that is, never stop learning or investing in your personal growth and development. And she highly recommend anyone who wants to be successful in both in life and in business to find a mentor. I think this is very true. And her latest craze is 
she's, I, I think she's a little bit OCD to me as her best friend. She's, she need advice. She, she need counseling. Okay. She's really OCD in her workout, in her lifestyle. She work out every day and every day for many hours. And she said a day without workout is like having constipation. Okay, so here we have three of our very interesting speakers. Now let me, okay, let me um, check who is joining us. Hi, Ian. Ian Lai is a branding expert from KL. And Danny Chin, we love you, Danny. Never, never fail to support us. Danny Chin is from Singapore. And Johnny Tan, Moses Chua also joining us. Yeah, and see who else. All right. So I am excited. <laughs> Not, uh, hold on first. Huh? We don't dive right into our topic tonight first because I want to do something very different while we are waiting for our audience to slowly, you know, fall in, log in. Let's play a game. Let's play a game, okay? Um, now, this game is the three speakers tonight has to compete with one another, lah. okay? I, I, I think you can mute yourself, okay? Um, you have to, okay, so the, the game goes like this. Um, I have 10 words here. I'm going to mention each of these words, and every time I mention, let's say, I said, um, let's say, um, I said paper, okay? So you have to, the first person who answered, to give an answer that is relevant to paper, that has something to do with paper and that makes sense, okay, will win. Um, sorry, you, you don't have a price to, to take home, but the one who answered first, basically I can see that your screen will be green color. So whoever the green color, you answer, you are safe. The other two slow ones. So I have my partner in crime now. Uh, is my partner in crime ready now? Jess, Sarah, and um, and Yo. Yes. Okay. I see your hand. Okay. So I have I have arranged with them. Okay. I took effort. So for those who are slow in answering, my partner in crime will have a a, a bowl of flour and they will press and decorate your face with talcum powder and with flour, okay? Now, so basically you have to be fast and your answer has to make sense, okay? Now, if you answer fast, but if your answer is wrong, your opponent is saved from the, from the penalty, you have two marks, two, okay? Any question? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So you have to shout out your answer, lah. That's See, the most important you answer. Are you here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, wait, uh, Oh, wait. Why they can't see you on screen? Okay, can can y'all see them on screen now? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot to put on gallery. Okay. So, any question before we start? Noah. All right. So remember. The one who shout out first, and I will be able to see on your screen the green color that come up on your on your screen. You will be the first one. Okay. So, all right. Audience, are you ready? All right. So, question number one. Michael Jackson. Dance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your era. <laughs> Sorry, boss, Johnny, and um, so Sarah, please. And yo, you can put your marking I, now. I think I put on my glasses back already, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, Sarah, you can do your marking. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Okay, now, now I know what this is for. I thought Je <laughs> I thought Jessica was on drugs. <laughs> Powder. <laughs> and where's yo? Yo, are you ready? Where's Yo? Uh? Yo? One, one, one in green. Oh, on Yo's afraid of sleeping on the sofa. <laughs> sayang, only a sayang. A hey, bigger lah. Oh my goodness. Okay. So, question number two. A little bit difficult, but then it's also easy. 
Greek mythology. Good. But Aristotle. Who answer first? What do you say, uh, Suhu? Why is it not coming? Greece. Oh, Greece. Okay. Hold, hold on. Why is it not coming out? <laughs> I just saw. My voice uh, is... Yo is, ha yo is very happy. Oh. Do it. Okay. So, um, Sarah, another one. Yo, shout out your answer, man. Okay. Now we are going fast, okay? We have to go fast. We have time to go. So, eight more to go. Make up. Girls. Laurel. <laughs> faster, faster. Laurel, okay. Laurel. Very good, girls. Johnny, one more, and Sharon, one more. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Uh, uh, For but then, Kim. Huh? Yes, thank you, Johnny. Kim Kardashian. Oh, Kardashian. Yes. Yeah. So who will be your will be your first? First. <laughs> Kevin, that is yours. Okay. Next, huh? Very easy. You have to be fast. Scream it out. Potato. Chips. <laughs> 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 Sharon, what, is, what are you doing? <laughs> I, You're doing I, facial masks, is it? Yeah, I got distracted. <laughs> okay. Question number six. Marvel. Pardon? Spider-Man. Avengers. Avengers. Okay. Spider-Man. Avengers. Avengers. Spider-Man is DC. <laughs> Give Sharon two marks. Wait, wait, wait. He resigned already. He resigned already. Actually, Marvel. Spider-Man is Marvel. Marvel, actually. Marvel. Ah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have powder here. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Jess. Jess, make bigger. La. Make bigger. Okay. Question number seven. Very easy. <laughs> okay. Very fast. Starbucks. Coffee. All right. <laughs> Yo. Coffee, right? Oh, okay. You don't have to laugh only. Sharon like, uh, and then, okay, question number eight. Japan. Nippon. Johnny, you are warm up already, huh? No, yeah, my video was close. Black, actually, just now I call out a lot of times, but it never come out with you. So I got to shout. Yeah, oh, right. okay, yeah, okay. They're louder. So, uh, Jess, have you put, and, uh, no, yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, question number nine. Black. White. White. Okay, Suhu first. <laughs> Suhu first. And last question. Pillow. Dog. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, <correct. laughs> Suhu first. All right. Thank you for being so sporting. Let's have a group photo, okay? Let's have a group photo. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for the fun. Let me check. I'm not sure why I can't. Okay, yeah. Okay, Phil is here. Suhu, Phil is here. And hi, James, Siobhan. Um... Yep. Hi, Ellie. Thank you for joining. And Lynn, uh, we have, okay, Lynn, how to unmute. Hi, Rimi and Sushi. In Chin says Sushi. Japan, Sushi. I, th I think our audience is having fun. La. Our audience is having fun. They are answering for you, okay? In Chin is so active. Thank you. Hi, Rose. Yep, Amita. Hi. Uh, Amitas uh, said, hi, Johnny. Nice to see you here. Hi, hi Amita. All right. So, um, uh, Sharon, actually, you can wipe off your face. <laughs> but you can, you can leave it on if you like, okay? So, um, uh, we, we work hard. We have fun. You know, we, we play hard. And now uh, it's time to uh, serious talk, all right? So, basically, um, this tonight's topic is uh, something very... Uh, um, very central, uh, basically it echoes in my heart because uh, when I first started my entrepreneur journey, I really struggled. I really struggled. I think uh, for some of you who have read my sharing on uh, Facebook, um, I basically use up everything and uh, it, it, 
it just with a dream, with a, with a determination and with faith, I venture in into image consulting. But sometime, you know, after three years to four years, I realized um, I, I, I love the job. I, I really love what I'm doing, but I can't survive, right? So I, I believe that this is one of the uh, struggles that many entrepreneurs out there are facing, right? They love what they're doing. They are gifted and they, they basically are talented in, 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 in what they're doing, but then it's just not able to keep themselves and their family afloat. So um, I had this question to uh, Suhu. Um, I know that, you know, you, you, by profession, you're a lawyer, you, you basically, you know, uh, Suhu, do you know that you can, you can earn a lot as a lawyer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So Suhu, Suhu, by profession, he is, a, he, he is a, a lawyer and, um, but he has other passion. His passion is, uh, you know, really equipping trainers and equipping coaches uh, and helping them to be successful. So that is what Suhu has been doing. So my question to you, Suhu, tonight is that how far should dream, should, should we dream? <laughs> Where is the line between uh, being practical and being logical? Uh, and yeah, basically what, what do you have to say on this? Um, okay, so I need to make a, a correction first. Um, the first first things first is um, I used to own a law firm, yes, um, but uh, I'm not uh, an advocate and solicitor. So technically, I cannot be a, a, a lawyer in the courts. Um, and um, there was, it was a nice childhood dream to have. Uh, everybody said either you become a lawyer or a doctor. So I picked the lawyer because I was afraid of blood. Um, and I like to argue, so my parents say that I should become a lawyer, you know. Um, but I found that it's not my passion. My passion was more into sales and into business. Um, and at that time, my passion was to make money. <laughs> um, why I came out eventually was because I think the pursuit of helping more people find their passion and find their calling um, was a lot louder than to continue uh, earning money in that sense. So to answer your question, when should a person decide when to give up or when to continue? Um, I always say this, the pet, I always say passion doesn't pay. And that's one of the biggest thing that people don't understand. You know, it's great to follow a, your passion, follow your dreams, but at the same time, we have to be very practical in a sense that you must make sure you are good in what you're passionate about. Not everything we are passionate about, we are good in. And not everything we are passionate about and good in is what the market wants. For example, if you are the best, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, rotary phone repairman, right? In this world today, I don't think you can find a living lah, because I don't think anyone uses a rotary phone anymore. You know? So the passion... Uh, what is needed in the market and your skills, I think it has to match in order for you to be able to really uh, make a career out of it. Yeah. If you have like, you have a passion, you're not really making money, but you're not losing money, you actually have a hobby. But if you have a passion and you're losing money, you have a charity. So be, be very mindful about that. Long. So if you ask me, for me, I'm a very practical guy, six months, you play around with it six months, you're still not making money. I think it's time to relook. Uh. Six months, uh, I lasted. I, I persevere four years. Then That's why you're still here, long. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you you are considered master level. Uh, for me, any any business, I play with it like six months. Um, I, I'm ready with a six months uh, runway. If the business is still not generating enough to sustain, I will chop up. Uh. So whoever the co-founder is, if they want to continue playing with it, they, I give them my share. You go and play. I don't play it out. <laughs> but then, you know, uh, there's, there's a, you know, uh, a saying that goes in business, you won't see money coming in for the first two years. I so, don't believe that. Uh. Okay. Personally, 
because uh, most of the businesses I look into are very service based, um, either that or very trading based. So it has to move. Uh, it, I don't look into capital intensive businesses like manufacturing um, because that requires a huge capital and then you know you have to wait, right? Um, any other kind of business, it has to have the business plan has to make sense within the first 12 months. And within the first six months, you'll be able to know already whether the business can sustain or not. If it cannot even sustain, that means it's bleeding out every month, then either you have a hobby or you're going to have a charity. One of the two only. You know, nothing wrong with it, but we just have to be very clear. If it's a hobby and I got another source of income, hey, I love doing it. Why not? If it's a charity and I have another source of income, I also love doing it. Why not? But if I rely on it as a source of income, then I really have to reconsider. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So your, your cutoff line would be six months. Six months. Six months. Fine hmm. Anything to add? Uh, Sharon and Johnny on this, like you know, how 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 far is the is the you know kind of like I, I will call it intentional blindness because a lot of entrepreneurs is like um, um, okay, have you watched American Idol? Yeah, during the audition, yes. they truly believe that they can sing. Some of those singers that come in. And it's like, William Hung, William Hung. And the judges, like, ah, you know, they, they are so baffled. Like, why are you even here? And, and they even have the guts to say, you do not know. You know, they scold back the judges and say that you do not know how to appreciate singing, you know, and, and songs and stuff like that. So we have entrepreneurs like that. And um, basically, you know, it, it's what is your advice for those that um, to, to wake up? You know, okay, so so both whether to those who are actually, you know, they, they should quit. What is your advice like, you know, after six months, or what are other um, manifestation or signs that you can see that you should quit your business? Or for those who are really, really good, uh, they should, these are the group of people who should persevere. Like for me, you know, after four years, I, I was still struggling because I found myself in the wrong market starting my business in Penang and I realized that Penang isn't ready at that time for uh, image consulting. And then I decided, okay, I pick up my business and I went to KL. That was when, you know, it's, it, 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 uh, it has returned. So for those who are really, really good in their, in their business or in their passion, when to hold on, to hold on for a little while more, don't give up. So uh, Johnny, what, what is your take on that? Well, least to be to be honest, I mean I'm I'm not an entrepreneur in a, to begin with, so that's why I kind of stand in admiration uh, uh, among the greats are uh, here, Suhu and Sharon, for being entrepreneurs in their right. But for me, I, I'm more like a, a realist, and and I, I'm not very risk. Um, I don't have appetite for risk, uh. But for me, on the practical side, is it takes a certain personality to uh, to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, you, you need to really have that sort of um, brave and the courage uh, uh, to begin with and from the practical side you know Suhu talked about six months is his uh, what they call threshold for me I think it, it all goes back to the person's appetite for risk number one number two is also the financial standing on a on a be very practical uh, you need to put food on the table uh, uh, for the family you also need to also look at look into how how uh, solid your, your financial backing is or your reserves are in this case. Uh, I think nowadays we talk about building resilience, building reserves because of the pandemic. So I think all this kind of come together to kind of determine whether it's six months or three months or a year or, or beyond that. Hmm. Yeah, passion has, has got, for, for me personally, passion has its, uh, what do you call, uh, limit, uh, time timeline to it. Because at the end of the day, is uh, if you don't have money on the table, uh, or where are you gonna get your source of uh, income? Uh? <laughs> but that's my my view anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I I love the statement uh, placed by Suhu. You know, charity is it a charity <laughs> or is it a hobby? All right. So very often we we can't see uh, being entrepreneur. We can't see that very clearly. 
right? Yeah. Uh, only third party when they look, hey, you're doing hobby or what? Or charity, you know? A lot of people, hey, free lah, you know? Let me try out your service and I ended up you're giving a lot of charity. So I totally agree with that. So Danny says, yeah, because I mentioned about um, uh, American Idol, Danny from Singapore mentioned, uh, says, William Hong today is a successful motivational speaker. He said, don't play, play. You're <laughs> William Hong or not? The, the yes. guy, the, the, this guy that sings, he bangs, he bangs. He bangs. <laughs> Now it's very famous, okay? So, well, sometimes also luck, yeah? So now, this leads me to um, uh, my second question, and uh, this one is uh, uh, directed to uh, Sharon. Sharon, um, I remember there was one time, I think during one of our uh, outing, yeah, the, the girls' outing, you did mention that, um, you, you know, one thing led to another, our conversation, and then uh, at that time, uh, you, you were considering about coming out full time, you know, uh, being an entrepreneur. And then uh, I asked you, and then you said, um, I think I will hold on to my job. <laughs> hold on to my job first, okay? Be practical first. Okay? Get more money first, okay? So um, I still remember that statement uh, by you. And what is your stand right now on this? <clears throat> yeah, because um, after um, thinking of, uh... Uh, have to go through some uh, thinking process that, you know, I like uh, what Suhu says. Uh, we have to be very clear that is it that you want to do it because of hobby? Because hobby will end up become a charity if it is not carefully handled. Because previously, we also run some businesses. Always, you know, uh, people dreams is to start off their cafe, you know, everybody want to be boss. But um, trust me, it's never been uh, easy, especially when you're in a retail and, you know, you just open up uh, the door and then waiting for people to come in. Hmm. Your, your, your tummy can tahan or <laughs> your passion can tahan. This one has to come first. Yeah, because uh, after that, then you said, you know, I, I, maybe it's uh, because of the meaning that I give to my job, you know, I look at my team that, you know, I still love my job, I still have the passion, so why not, you know, and I have changed the story towards um, the how, the way that I lead my team, because, you know, now leading in a new team, I have a, a, a team of uh, quite a newbie, and I, I, I give it, I give the meaning um, to it, it's like, you know, uh, I have a bigger mission, and also, it is um, the things that I'm doing right now is actually aligned to the future things that are in plan for me. Mm. Yeah, so that's why it's, it's, you know, you still have the fire in it. Mm -hmm. then, um, then what is your advice to those people who are, you know, dreading every morning to go to work? And just change job because it's <laughs> definitely no meaning. Because um, as for my latest job, after five years, you know, I'm still looking forward uh, to, my, to my work and I don't, I don't actually consider it as a job. Because sometimes that my, uh, my husband will complain that, you know, can you put more thoughts into our relationship other than uh, your doctors, you know, your team member, you know, I will, I will think, I will remember their birthday, but not my anniversary. <laughs> well, uh, you put more marking on <laughs> That's why just now revenge already. Yeah, revenge, but still, uh, he's so soft. Uh, he's still so soft. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think, I think it's very important that, you know, you see your job that, you know, um, what is the meaning that you give it to it? If it is like dragging yourself, then don't, you know? And if you think that this is the job that you want and make it interesting, put some creativity, always instill fun into whatever things that you do. Yeah, that is my philosophy. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> Thank you. So we have we have Lynn Lynn with us, uh, and she asked Lynn asked for advice. She said, you know, someone mentioned to her that her type of business uh, will do good in the West. So basically, whatever she's doing right now here in Malaysia, it won't work. So, what is your advice for her? Uh, Suhu, you want to try? Um, so it, it depends again, like I, I uh, where is the source? I was reading through the comment as well just now. And I was like, in my mind, my first question came to my mind was, where's the source of this advice? Is it like, you know, feng shui advice? I think your feng shui lies in the West. Uh, and if it's a feng shui advice, then my question will be, uh, West of what? You see, because if you're West of Malaysia, then Indonesia, 
But if you're west of East Malaysia, then in West Malaysia, lor. So uh, I don't know what you mean by the West, or does it mean you know somebody uh, advise you, you know, a business consultant or coach advise you to say your business lies in the European countries, you know, in Europe or, or in America, you know, uh, that that's what you mean by the business in, in the West. If that's the case, then the question is, um, what is your, your business model and what is your business actually? If you want to test market, instead of going to Europe or go to uh, America, I suggest you go down to Australia first. Um, reason because I still feel, I mean, as much as, as we think that the world is equal and, and all of that, unfortunately, there's still a lot of whitewashing. There's still a lot of um, prevalence of uh, or, or rather preferences for Caucasian um, uh, in certain countries. Uh. So I think it, it might be challenging if you want, if you're thinking of like going straight into US, for example. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, it's not about whether you're Asian or not, but whether you're American or not, right? Um, Europe might be a bit easier market in some of the countries in Europe, but I think it's a small, small leap. Go down South Australia, very similar time zone with us, you know, uh, which allows you to, to get in e faster. A lot of Malaysians there already also, you know, a lot of Asians there, an easier market to just penetrate first and test and see if your services and products are suitable there. If it is, why not? You know, and I, again, I also don't know what product you're, you're distributing. For example, I'm, I train NLP. I will not go to US and teach Americans NLP um, because it's like, you know, going to China and teaching them Mandarin, right? It's not my cup of tea. But I might go to US and teach them Sun Tzu, the art of war, and the 36 stratagems of war, which is better to learn from an uh, English-speaking Chinaman than an uh, Amor uh, in the sense. Uh. So it depends on your product again. Uh. Yeah. I hope I hope that answers to your question, Lin. Yeah. And um, perhaps, uh, Johnny, you want to handle Shi Wei. Okay. She asked... Um, you know, uh, she she all this while she thinks that uh, each of us has been gifted a certain talent, all right? And this gifted talent that is naturally bestowed to us will lead us to make money. Okay, and uh, and most likely this gift is our passion. Is it right? Um, okay, so well, Shuwei, I I like your question because I think later part uh, in my sharing, I'll cover this as well. So I think like, I'd like to begin with, you know, in, in any career or in any work that you do, um, if you want to achieve your career best, yeah, career best meaning to say that there are, there are three intersection points, uh, if I may just suggest. One is the, your talent, means what you are gifted with. The second intersection is your passion, uh, what you love to do. but Never forget, the third intersection is the organization or the kind of, maybe, uh, maybe it's an organization that you work for that enables you to practice or let your talent and your passion come together in a, you know, it, it, it will just cross-section uh, where you get the, the three intersection, you know, in a Venn diagram, uh, right at the middle, that's called career best. So I think it's not just about having a talent, uh, or having a passion by itself, or even having two together, but without the third intersection, because uh, if there's nothing to hold on to, there's no, if it, it, it could be a product, it could be a services in this case, or it could be a company you work for, that allows you to try, you know, to, to, to be successful. Uh, your, your manager, your superior, believe in you, or trust you with, to handle those jobs. And that's where you learn, that's where you try, because you, you are talented in that area. And you're passionate, right? You're doing the job that you love most. And the organization, you, you together with the organization, you grow with it. Now that, I would say, that's where you can make money uh, in that sense. Uh. Mm -hmm. So you need to have both three uh, to have that career best. So I'll talk a little bit more later, yeah, for yeah. my case. I think that that is really, really helpful. Sometimes, uh, very often, we just see, you know, uh, a certain quadrant and we fail to basically combine all these three into you know what is the talents that actually you know uh, uh, maximize our potential and from there uh, people can recognize it and people are willing to pay 
pay us for our talent. Yeah, and basically this this also leads me to to my last question for the night. That is, you know, um, to uh, Johnny because I know that uh, you are having a full time job. Okay, but um, I also find that this is your passion of, you know, being in the HR, uh, equipping people, you know, helping uh, your team to realize their, uh, uh, their uh, maximum potential. So what is your secret? What is your secret in aligning what you love to do and then, and, and you know, and, and pay at, at the end of it, you know, every month. So how do you align it? Okay, thanks Liz. So let, let me just continue what I mentioned uh, in answering Shiri's question just now huh? uh, as an extension to it. You know, I'd like to just talk further. Now, how I started in my career 25 years ago, it started out with a very simple, uh, noble desire. That is to learn how to present to people. Can you believe that? I mean, it wasn't about making money, making first million by the age 30. Uh, it was nothing of that sort. But it was wanting to learn how to present, how to get uh, past the, the stage fright, you know, the, the nervousness. And so I found myself in the training department. So Suhu, I, I was a trainer too, uh, once upon a time, uh, 25 years ago. For eight years, I was in a training department where I learned to present, I learned how to train, uh, and I train people in that sense. Uh. So later, it kind of grew. As I look into the HR spectrum, I saw the opportunity that, hey, HR is not just about training per se, but there are many functions in HR. And that's how I it got me interested. After about eight years, I moved out into a, a front end of the spectrum of HR uh, or human uh, capital development. Uh. So that, that was my first journey. Uh. That's how it started. So to cut a long story short, uh, it was all the time, the passion uh, about wanting to serve others. Okay, that was my main motivation. Uh, once in one of the jobs I was with, my CEO mentioned or my MD mentioned, Johnny, you at any point in time you want to switch career to general management, uh, please let me know. I'll find a place for you. So that was the offer for me. I said thanks, uh, but no thanks because I think I would. I'm in my comfortable place right now. This is what my passion is, and this is what I'm good at. So. The third quadrant, uh, sorry, third intersection, as I said, is the organization uh, that allows you or enable you to, to thrive yeah, uh, in that sphere, your job versus your passion. So that was the all this while, the 25 years, uh, I, I'm, I'm very, very blessed. And of course, I always believe in what I call God's favor, uh, uh, that every time when I come across uh, an organization that I work for, I, I'm very blessed to, to come across good people, um, good managers, uh, even VPs who actually believe in me and give me the opportunity. Um, that's why, you know, in that sense, uh, in that course of the career, I build that aspiration. Okay, it's not just about wanting to be good, but I have dreams. So since this this uh, evening's pillow talk talk about dream, uh, I actually dream you know, along the way in my HR journey. I dream, there are only two dreams, very simple. Okay, um, because all along I was in a manufacturing based kind of uh, what they call HR. So I supported factories for about 16 years or so. And first dream that I had was, hey, I want to move out of factory. I want to be in an organization where I want to work with smart people, uh, you know, smart people, all the brains. Uh, uh. Oh God put me in R&D. Uh, can you believe that? I have to go through uh, seven sessions of in, uh, interview to get this job you know because i never had the experience to to uh, what you lead a hr supporting the r d department so the interview make sure they drill and drill and drill to make sure i'm qualified for the job uh. so i got a job all right so i ended up supporting the r d organization and in that space i was allowed to be given that freedom and also the opportunity to be a, a coach and a mentor to my senior director of R&D. You know, the VP of uh, in H in uh, US, uh, R&D VP, kind of gave me permission, Johnny, you go and coach this person because I, I see that I want to groom him, but I need a HR guy to kind of walk alongside him. 
to kind of pinpoint to, to, to coach him and you know, let him know his blind spots and so on. And so eventually, um, he got promoted, lah, you know, uh, to be a head, uh, another level up lah, as a result. Lah. It's not to, my, to, to, to what I've done, but I'm happy that uh, I walked with him in that process lah, uh, in serving this, this senior director. Um, and that, that is the biggest satisfaction that, that I get out of this. Lah. So coming back to um, my passion, I'm never interested to be number one in the company. But I'm okay with number two or number three as a HR, as a supporting function to make this number one guy or, or lady successful. So in that journey, in, in the, the last 25 years, it has always been like this. Okay, so second dream. Um, in this dream, I mentioned that uh, I kind of think to myself, how I wish I am given the opportunity to be in a startup. Because I've done many things. I've done closing down factory, right? I've done firing people, uh, retrenchment and whatever, not those are part and parcel of being HR, but I've never done a startup. So that was my second dream, you know. So along the way, I gave up that dream because it was because of poor timing. My former organization needed me a lot at that time that I could not move. I have to withdraw from the interview session. I was just shortlisted to be the, the final two already. Then I decided I'd withdraw yeah, during the last final interview. I gave it up because I felt that that organization needed me. I have to stick to them, stick with the team to help them through that, that difficult times uh, uh, of laying off and, and so on. So for me to abandon the ship is, is, is a big no-no. Uh, it's against my conscience. So coming back to that, that second dream. So I kind of left it aside. Lah. I said, oh, yeah, okay, lah. no need. Lah. Getting old already. No energy already. Lah. I want to be in a startup also require a lot of strength and all that. So lo and behold, uh, two years ago, um, this CEO from Hong Kong came to Penang to search for a place to, to, to start this factory. So I was, by God's grace, I was arranged to meet him. And, and so, you know, the rest is history. I got this job, I'm living my dream, second dream. And these are the two dreams I have in my career and I got all of these. Uh. So, you know, end of the day is, is passion. Um, what I'm good at and the organization that allows me to get these two together. Okay, I'm at the stage right now in this new company, uh, present company as a company director to do what, you know, it's to uh, uh, what they call, uh, set up a new building because we, we just got, got the property and now I'm going to design and all that. So there's another new things to do. Uh, yeah. A new team uh, to design. Uh. Yep. Yeah, I mean, to do all the Ren Renault, you know, the plan, the ID, you know, I want to make it like a bit of Google type of uh, feel uh, for a factory. So these are all the interesting things, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jody, for your sharing. We have a question here before time runs out. Um, Jesse wrote a question to Sharon and uh, Jesse asked, how do you cope with your full-time job and your passion? doing, you know, spark joy, uh, uh, helping a client to, to uh, actually, what do you do in Komari Method? Perhaps tell us a little bit. Yeah, it's actually a, a space consultant is that, you know, we believe in a creating space. You know, having space means that you're having a positive flow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do that's, you that's why it's related to, a, um, I, will, I will sum it up as a clear mind, create opportunity. That's why we need a lot of space with a good vibes and the flows. Yeah. And I've been yeah. to your house, a lot of space. Beautiful. <laughs> a lot of good vibes, I know. I love it. So, yeah. I the question, how do you cope being full-time and also pursuing this uh, passion as a space consultant? Yeah, I think previously, um, before this, uh, uh, MCO uh, pandemic hits, right? I was uh, always uh, busy traveling around and then um, I just got a lot of things uh, on my plate that want to achieve too many. But over the time, <clears throat> I find that less is more, you know, having less things that um, in a, uh, looking at your prospects, uh, at a different aspect in your life that really know what you want and then immerse into that. So it's now is that, you know, I have less thing, but in fact, I achieve more. Yeah. It means back to simplicity, even though you are holding a nine to five job, but then yeah. you have less things to stress about. So that allows you more time to do what you are passionate about. 
Am I right? Yes, yes. I yeah. hope that answers to uh, Jesse's question. Another question to Suhu, also from Jesse, is any advice for the younger generation? I know uh, Suhu, all around you are all young people, okay? That's why it makes you look so young. Um, any advice for the younger generation who are struggling with chasing their own dream or following their parents' dream? I think this is really a, a painful subject, but nevertheless, um, yeah, let's 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 hear from you, Suhu. Um, this this is a very good uh, <laughs> dilemma to have. Yeah, um, un unfortunately, it's very rare for uh, for younger generation to voice out their dreams. Yeah. To their parents, are sometimes especially uh, you know with more dominant parents, or sometimes with businessman parents. That I built this business, I'm inheriting it to you. You know, uh, you should be grateful. Yeah, uh, and so it's that that comes to the question of whether uh, what kind of relationship you have, whether you can be open and upfront about your passion, um, and whether the parents can support your passion. Um, and sometimes it's also, you know, as much as we say certain people uh, uh, want to be able to strike out on their own, young people go out and, and, and build, you know, uh, having parental support in a lot of different areas is critical, especially when you're chasing your dreams. I'll give you some simple examples. Huh? Um, look at all the, the so-called, the classic legendary startups. Yeah? All they start from where? Parent, garage. Imagine if we've got no parent support, which whose garage are they going to be setting up from? So that's one example. Uh, financing. Where's the best way to get financing? Pharma, father, mother, easy place to get financing. Another example of parental support. Um, even for family people, for example, parents, uh, you have children. Who's going to take care of your kids when you're out there pursuing your dreams? Parental support. So whether you like it or not, if, if you ask me in my personal opinion, uh, uh, fighting for your dream is really that word of fighting. Uh, and if you're fighting, you need two things. Number one, you need to be able to attack. You can't attack if your home base is insecure. So who can take care of your home base? Uh, very often, it's having good parental support. Uh. But what if your parents' dream is not aligned with your dream? Uh, that one, you have to have a good heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Uh. And uh, of course, some parents will think they know better. Uh, some parents are very accepting to what we want. Um, and from my experience coaching people so far, I realize it's not the parents are don't know what the children, or rather, let me put it in a different way. Children think parents have a different dream for them because they never spoke to the parent. And the children are assuming the parents have a different dream for them. But all the parents actually want for the children is for the children to be safe, for the children to be happy. And they can express it in many different ways. Huh? But if you can assure your parents that what you're doing, you are safe, you're happy, and you can express to them what you really want, I'm very certain your parents will be listening. Yeah, I totally agree with Suhu. Uh, very often is um, is a, a, a gap in uh, in the way we communicate with our parents. Yeah, um, parents basically wants the best for us. It's just how we and, and very often they they are very protective. They they want to ensure that whatever decision that we make will will you know will be lasting and will be rewarding. So that is parents because I'm a mother. I I you know my son uh, studying psychology and then I asked him what do you want to do after your course and then he said counseling. Immediately the first thing being an entrepreneur counseling uh, don't don't get paid one you know counseling you know cannot survive one you know counseling but then you know as a mother I, I want to support I say yeah okay okay you know and then but at the back of my mind is like okay let, let me now figure out uh, uh, how to make his counseling business uh, 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 you know, really get paid. Uh. So my parents are always like that. 
but it's just that uh, we really, like Suhu said, we really need to sit down and know how to talk to our parents. So for, so for those who do not know how to get through your parents, please take an NLP course and then you can basically NLP your way, okay? NLP your way using the right words and then the right action and your parents will be just hypnotized, right? So who? <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, okay, let me uh, check through what um, other comments. Okay, Lynn said, you know, my mom only want me to have one client. Oh, Lynn, I don't really understand what you mean. Uh, your mom only wants you to have only one client. That is her, is it? I'm sure she is willing to pay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Bati, Bati, hi, Bati, sis, thank you for joining. Yeah, uh, you totally agree. Parents, basically, we love our kids a lot, a lot. Yeah, so um, Bati, you use this many times. You use what? NLP, is it? You NLP your, your parents. <laughs> Yeah, so um, we are very near to our end. Um, I just want to ask, basically, I'm, I'm really thankful for tonight's session, uh, really bring back a lot of uh, deep thoughts uh, and also reminder along, you know, my entrepreneur journey from all your sharing. Uh, is there any other things, you know, that you want to add so that uh, our audience tonight will, will, you know, will be encouraged? whatever journey they are, whether they are having full-time job or whether they are, you know, uh, entrepreneurs or they are in the crossroad of choosing. Uh, Sharon, perhaps is there anything that you want to leave to our audience? Yeah, to me is that uh, I think clarity is, um, is very important and the mindset, you know, in, um, while choosing uh, what you want to pursue, it is not purely because of an impulsive or, you know, just get upset over something or just hearsay. Yeah, that is what I want to say. Thank you. Clarity from Sharon. Johnny? Okay, I think my advice here is not so much of the, for the entrepreneurs, uh, huh? but it's more for people who are actually working, uh, having a job and all that. I think there are two things that I would like to just have a key takeaway tonight. Is Number one is do something for yourself uh, to future-proof your career. It's very important because, you know, organization will, will use you until they don't want you, then they'll just leave you alone. So if you don't do something for yourself, you don't build that competency uh, um, for your future, you future-proof your career, okay? Number two is that you have to build good connection because you find that good connections will be helpful later in life, yeah? So, so along the journey, as you, if you are young, you're just starting out, just remember these two things. Um, build your competency, future-proof yourself, and number two is build good, good connections along the way. People who, will, who, who what do you call trust you, people who will help you. And along the way, you know, it's reciprocal in a sense. Network is not just about sucking a source uh, from one source, but actually you yourself also must be willing to give. That's what good connection is all about. Thank you. Thank you for your advice. Um, Suhu. For, for me, I will say, um, enjoy the opportunity that COVID has presented. You know, whether you're working, or whether you are on your entrepreneurial journey, or whether you're studying and about to come out, or whether you just came out, COVID has reset the whole world on a new playing field. What used to work, no longer works. What used to be, is no longer there. So there's no more reason and advice uh, and excuses for many people. You know, the, the, the old fear, I'd rather continue doing what I'm doing because I'm comfortable, all that is gone. Everything has been reset. So this is a great opportunity. If you were not happy with your job and you have lost it, congratulations, you were not happy with your job in the first place. Now you have opportunity to restart. If you are on an entrepreneurial journey and you know you are struggling and then everything is gone, hey, opportunity to restart. And um, COVID is a great, great opportunity, I find, because... Um, the financial institution are supporting in a lot of different ways. The government is supporting in a lot of different ways. You know, I don't think you'll be able to find this kind of opportunity again, where it's not a matter of who you used to know and, and all of those. It's a matter of who can you build that relationship with, like Johnny says, like right now, you know. Um, the whole world is flat. International travel is limited. 
So it doesn't, like last time you have to travel to another country to go and network and communicate. Now everything is, everything is online. The whole world is online. You know, I got a friend who sat down in the beginning of MCO. Every day, he just go for business meeting after business meeting because every hour there's a new time zone. Every hour there's a meeting going on. And he was just, right now, he's enjoying a global business which he never had an opportunity in the past. Mm. I think it's a great reset. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. And um, uh, allow me to, uh, to also share my, uh, uh, why I lasted all these years. You know, uh, I think uh, my sharing in Facebook is just half of it that, you know, I ended my sharing with, uh, I really want to give up and uh, bringing out my resume. I want to, you know, brush up my resume and then submit my resume. Just, you, you know, before I embark into my own business, I'm a very well-paid uh, uh, marketing director. I was like, you know, what am I doing? What am I doing? Oh, uh, for many times I asked myself, you know, let's just quit and uh, go back to work. Um, but I have a calling. I have a calling for transformation in people's life. As much as uh, I have witnessed myself being transformed, uh, the calling is just so, um, it's just burning within me. So uh, how I lasted uh, these seven years is basically uh, based on um, a promise, a promise that I got from the Bible that, you know, God says uh, he has plans for me, plans to prosper me and not to harm me, plans to give me a hope and a future that is found in Jer Jeremiah uh, 29 verse 11. So basically, this is this is my testimony that uh, beside clarity, beside, you know, all the advices by uh, our speakers here today, it's also uh, assurance in, in, in your faith in God. Yeah, so basically that, that is what will direct your future path. So um, I think this is a really, really um, a heartwarming uh, session. I believe a lot of our audience also uh, uh, echo with that, you know. Um, basically no, no, no mass, just transparent sharing uh, of our own struggles, of, our, of the hope that we have that we want to share with the audience today. Uh, and um, anything else? I actually lost. Uh, I'm reading my my um, comment from the audience, and then my phone out of battery. So, uh, can can one of my speaker help me to to check whether is there any other uh, question? <laughs> Let me see. Uh. Okay. Any other? Yeah. Eng Chin said, "Very practical session." Yeah. Brati, yeah, we love you too. Direct to the point, yes. So, um, so do do continue to um, uh, follow us at Elizabeth Image Branding. It will be a pillow talk. It will be a every Saturday session. Let me share with you before we end. Yeah, let me share with you uh, our next pillow talk. Um, let me see. Okay. So the next pillow talk will be next Saturday on the twenty seventh of February. I am taking a break. Okay. So uh, it will be. Uh, with my glam grads, Ataras, Mabel, and Jesse, with another um, also very deep uh, but necessary uh, topic, why having healthy boundaries are important. I think whether you're working in the corporate nine to five, uh, being an employee, or whether you are as an entrepreneur, or whether you are a, 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 you know, a son or a daughter to your parents, uh, we need boundaries, even with our friends. Uh, having the courage to say no, and yet having the compassion to love. Yeah, so uh, when we talk about boundary, doesn't mean that, you know, rejection, but there is a balance of, I want to love, but at the same time, I need to say no. So uh, that will be uh, our next uh, week talk. Uh, we really want to uh, encourage you to join us and share with us what are your experience about you know setting your own boundaries and having how to build this courage to actually say no uh turn down offer you know say no to your parents say no to your to your boss and stuff like that okay so do join us 27 february that is next saturday 9 30 with the glam grads and for tonight i want to really virtual hug all my um uh speakers uh 
you know, really, really good friend. And I'm so grateful that you agree to come on board. And to our audience spending for the past one hour with us, thank you so much and see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.